I know some people might show up and see my streams and they're like, hold up. There's zero people here. Who is he talking to? I'm talking to you, bro. You just took forever to watch my video. I wasn't talking to this douchebag that's going to pop up online here in a minute and try and give me some shit about who I'm talking to. I did it for you because I'm making this content and we're going to take over the world one of these days. Um, let me see here. Code Vein. That was kind of a game I just played just to say I played it. It was kind of like a a vampire Final Fantasy. Uh, I should probably share my screen at this point. Hold on. Technical stuff. I'm getting better with it. Even though I'm learning how to use Twitch and which is dog shit. How's it sharing the entire screen, but it doesn't show up? Hold up. There it is. All right. So. Is that right? Sure. Yeah, that's right. Code bang. Pretty dope game. It's kind of like Vampire Final Fantasy bit. It's pretty dope. Um, but like I said, I kind of just played it just to say that I played it. Um, for the content, Conan, I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, Crashlands, kind of just a game I play just to play it. Cyberpunk was a huge disappointment, and they need a swift kick in the dick for ever putting out this hot piece of garbage. Absolute trash fight me day of dragons was really dope it was really dope a dragon simulator hundred well not hundreds i would say like probably actually i, w I would say probably by now i would be surprised if they had a, at least a hundred different colors that you could have and it's like 20 different types so Really versatile dragon simulator. It's a game on the rise. I highly recommend it. Uh, Desolate. Desolate was a fucking phenomenal game. If you like post-apocalyptic survival with like a zombie vibe, uh, kind of like Dying Light and Fallout had this weird toxic little baby that drains all your time. And uh, definitely wouldn't mind getting back into it because I do have quite a few achievements I haven't unlocked. And uh, what am I going back through it? You see that? 3.2% of players ever. For all of this, it's like top bot 2.9. How many people actually beat the game? Hold on. Was that an, that was an achievement, right? I don't know. I don't know. It's one of the achievements. A lot of those are top 5% achievements right there. It was pretty dope. I love that game. Had a lot of fun with it. Dying Light was the OG zombie survival for me. I'm not saying in the world. But for me personally, Dying Light was the first. And it was huge oh my god i remember when it first came out i probably played it through all the way like three times three four times all the way through loved every minute of it and you know i know i didn't get a whole lot of achievements for it but dying light was kind of one of those games where you could just jump in and do a bunch of shit and just hours later 
you're out of time. You know, but there's there is still a lot to that game, and there's so much that you can do that's kind of just um, that kind of just uh, takes up your time, and it doesn't really have anything to do with the story at hand, and you can kind of just fly through the story. But yeah, had a great time with that, and beauty of dying light is uh is still expanding so i have dying light 2 on my xbox i beat it on my xbox this was at the time when dying light 2 came out i still had my laptop so i didn't want to um take up so much space on my laptop. I had other things that I wanted to play on my laptop, but I did have Dying Light 2 on my computer, I mean, uh, my Xbox, and it was roughly the same. I didn't get all of the achievements in that either. It's definitely, for me, Dying Light 1 was better, but I think from what I hear, Dying Light 2 has had a lot of updates. I didn't like the fact that the... um. The hunters were not out at night anymore. That was a bummer. As well as um, there was no guns. The map itself, even though was very immersive, was very comparable to the first one. I feel like they didn't really switch up. I kind of wish they would, like, changed up the environment, so to speak, a little bit more. But it still was beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Like, like the map was awesome, but it just is what it is. Dying Light 2 was, for me, good, but not as good as 1. Then you have Enshrouded. Enshrouded is a new game on deck. Really dope um, concept. Valheim. The Rising, um, Zelda, Diablo, all wrapped up into one beautiful package. Damn, I already got like 62% of the achievements. What in the fuck? To be fair, I've been boss farming my ass off. 30% of players actually got to level 20. I'm about to hit level 30. I wonder how many people actually got to 30. Even less than 20. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> um, It is a bitch to get to level 30. I've killed all of the bosses like five times each in this game. Well, except for the fifth boss. Because he bugged. He got bugged out on me. And I just found him. I just got the flame high enough to find him. Found him. And he got bugged. But it is what it is. Factorio was one of those games I played just to say that I played it. The Forest. Oh man, this is actually a soft spot for me because this is where a lot my content creation actually started. It's truly the first game that I legitimately thought of a video that I wanted to watch and do was the forest. Um, in the forest, my first video was that I wanted to do a crafted weapons only challenge. That was the first video. Video series. I wanted to be a whole series where I complete the whole game and I beat um, Megan Cross with nothing but fire arrows with a basic bow was the idea. Like fire arrows, spears, Molotovs. That's what I was going to basic bow. Like. And um, in doing it, I uh, ended up getting. <laughs> it's kind of funny because, like, like, that was the initial goal, was to beat the game. But then I ended up getting sidetracked 
with this warship effort and I ended up instead of beating the game I built this uh boat <laughs> with two catapults on it and when I finally built the boat built a big ass wall compounded it out did a lot of building and then got sidetracked made the boat and then um never ended up beating the game just ended up making the boat and then I went on to different stuff so the forest is definitely um one of the most games in my opinion that can really get you to lose track of a lot of time and a lot of stuff that you got going on um so yeah, it was interesting. Initially, I had came with the idea I was going to do the crafted weapons challenge, which I kept up with that the whole time. Like I, I lived on the map with nothing but crafted weapons, so that was the goal. Um, I did that, but like originally, I wanted to beat the game, and I just kind of put that notion to side because all of the side content I was just out there building and shit, bro. And I only have a handful of things to do, vegan. Spelunker. See, that Spelunker, I have an issue with that. Okay? Because I've been through all the games. But if you don't search all of the caves, then you don't get the credit for it. So you have to go into each cave and go through the entirety of the cave. You can't miss a spot. Finding passengers, I never actually set out to do that, so I'm surprised it's that's as high as it is. I'm surprised I found 29 of them, to be honest. And that's a load of dog shit I have, and I don't know why I don't have that. So I have an issue with Spelunker and um, the Hunter one. That's dog shit, in my opinion. But we're going to go on. Uh, Game I played. Yeah, here's another one. Literal game I just played to... Uh, Say I played it. Gord. A very immersive, which I will be getting back into this game um, soon. A very immersive, painful game to play because all of the things that can go wrong. It's kind of like, it's like The Sims in Nordic culture with like, Cause you got to worry about the characters' feelings and their emotions and shit, and uh, all of the extra shit that comes on with the world. And on top of that, you had to survive and stuff. So it's like a RTS thing where it's it's very personal and immersive, and you get so many extra traits and attributes that each character has. Like it's kind of Kind of like The Sims with Dungeons and Dragons in a RTS format. So it's it's got a lot to it. It's got a lot to it. It's got a lot of Nordic culture, Nordic vibes, different um different things that um kind of come up randomly like they had uh this one woman popped up she asked if she could stay in the settlement and i saw how much food we had and i was like nah i can't take her on right now they told her no she dies at the doorstep you can only get rid of a body if you have a cemetery i didn't even think to get rid of the body so when i didn't get rid of the body and she stayed there she died there. I mean, she died there, and then she spread the plague there. And then, like, three of my people in the settlement got the plague. And then they spread it to more people. And it's just shit like that can happen all the time, which I love it for it. And that playthrough was dead. After that happened, everyone died. I died because I told that woman no. Because I didn't just suck it up and take on the new person. Or, if I would have said no, I had to have a cemetery. I didn't know that was a thing. So, all in all, I died because of it, and I love that that was a thing. 
And I have a lot of love for this game. Green Hell was absolutely the most painful experience I've ever had. And I love it. <laughs> I love the pain of this game. Um, they added animal husbandry. So you can start raising livestock. I have a herd of tapir and boar. I don't know. I can't remember what they call them. But tapir and boar. Oh, lots of achievements. All the tribal people you can save. There, yeah, there's so much stuff. And I think a lot of the reasons, okay, why, you know, I got this achievement. It says 2.0% of players have ever achieved this achievement. This game is hard enough to even survive, let alone to get your character to the point where they can go out on a map and do something. And then if you're out on the map and something goes wrong, you can easily go back to nothing. And have nothing. And so it's a very humbling game. Very. Loved every minute of it. Probably will be doing more onto it. Um, Oh. oh, I didn't even know you were... How do you breed them? I'm pretty sure I know the one other guy that may have completed that quest. That's how tight me and Green Hell are since the beginning, since it first released. I probably know the one guy. I'm pretty sure it's just in your heads. That is the one guy that actually completed that trial. Because that's like, that's got to be end of the new map type shit. 28? I feel like I know the one guy that actually did that. Okay. Hypercharge. My son loves the ever-living shit out of this game. Can't recommend it enough. I played it a bunch. I have it installed on my laptop. I don't play it over here, but I have it installed on my laptop. It stays installed on the laptop because my boy takes that over. And uh, he loves the shit out of this game. It's like small soldiers in a Call of Duty format. Much love for it. It's an awesome game. And, um, yeah, these are his achievements. These aren't even mine. These are my boy's achievements. He used a hypercharged battery. I didn't, I don't know what that is. Um, complete all levels. What a fucking legend. Toy Hunter. When was this? 22? Oh, he's, he's put it up for a while. I never really paid attention to this. Yeah, it's been out for some years, um, but I still highly recommend it. And it's still getting updates. So, yeah, keep your eye out for it. It's like Small Soldiers, but in a Call of Duty vibe. Highly recommend it. I had a great time. The few times that I did play with him, um, I had a great time doing it. And he plays it all the time. The Long Dark. Without a doubt, probably the most realistic survival game. Because there's some stuff in Green Hell. I would only say this about Green Hell. There's some stuff in Green Hell that they don't do it time-oriented, which they should. And in The Long Dark, Everything is time-oriented. If I spend too long cooking dinner, I'm fucked for the night. My guy's sleep schedule is going to be fucked. I'm going to have to sleep into the morning. That's going to take out of what I can get accomplished the next day. That's going to fuck me on the next night. And you can't go out at night for the most part because you can't see fucking shit, even with a light. 
and it's cold as shit. And, um, you know, all these achievements must be in survival. I didn't do a lot in survival mode. Yeah, it says survive. Yeah, it's survival mode. That's pretty. Damn. Stone Age Sniper. 25 meters away. 80 feet shot with a rock. That's impressive. Um. Yeah, yeah, see, single game. A lot of these are in survival. I didn't do a bunch in survival. But I did do the full story up until chapter 4. And I think there's only 5. And the only reason I stopped at 4 was because I used to play the game when it was only 3. So I stopped playing the game because it, I was done with it. And then they came out with some more, so I need to get back into it. Open all safety deposits and hey, that is a huge like I do I've done it like three times through. Um because I wanted to get it cleaner. Because there's a lot of stuff that you can fuck up and I wanted to make sure to do. Every time I did it, I did it with that though. With the safety deposit boxes. And the first time that I did it, my first run ever with it was so there were so many mistakes that I just wanted to do it over. And then, uh, I got some other achievements in here. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. That much, I, I played single game. So I've played survival before, and the one time, few times that I ever played survival, I think I got this bad boy. I didn't even notice that. Nice. Top 10, baby. Metro Exodus was... I'll say it like this. It's like a Tarkov Fallout. And, uh, excruciatingly hard task. And... I never really finished it. I got into it. I played, I don't know how many hours, eight hours. So I got about eight hours into it. Um, I ain't gonna cap. A lot of that was just trial and error. You know what I'm saying? And I always watch cinematics. So when you see these eight hour things, you gotta think two of those hours were probably just straight video. So I do need to get back into this. I did I did enjoy it. I don't have anything bad to say about it. I think I I did like how the guns were customizable and the way that you can change up the guns. I think that was pretty cool. So it's one of the games I kinda need to get back into. There's a lot of games that I put out content just to show people that I'm interested in it, but there's quite a few games I don't want to do without an audience. I feel like it would be a wasted playthrough if I didn't have an audience for it. And, you know, I'm putting my feelers out there. I'm networking and stuff. So I'm trying to reach out on all these different games to try and, you know, capture an audience in some way, shape, or form. Myth of Empires is what I'm actually grinding out right now. Um, I may end up playing it later on tonight. I don't know. Kind of wanted to just do a breakdown of some of it. Even this entire list that I'm covering right now in this video that I will be chopping up for YouTube. Um, this is only a portion of what I've done. The best stuff that I've ever done was not recorded and will never be. It's already done, so it will never be recorded. I just realized I skipped a lot. I think I skipped all the way to Code Vein. I think I started at Code. That's what it was. I started at Code Vein. I started the list at Code Vein because me looking at this reminded me of how long my list is. Um, Call to Walrus. I never actually played it. I downloaded it. And I thought it was something different. It looked pretty dumb, and the controls, yeah. Call of Duty will always have a special, 
place in my heart and under my foot. <laughs> That's what I have. To, it's a love and hate relationship with Call of Duty. Dark Alliance. The, in my opinion, best dungeon crawler of its time. And I would argue probably if you could even compare if if you could renovate the graphics and do like updated content, Boulder's Gate would be or Dark Alliance in general, just like this whole series, would still be up there with the greatest dungeon delvers ever. Without a doubt. Legendary content. I had an amazing time with it. Ark still has a special place in your boy's heart. It has been, well, this is survival of the fittest. Um, which to be fair, I never did this. I have no problem doing it, but it's another one of those things where it's kind of like, I need an audience before I do some shit like that. I feel like it'll be very time constituent and it would just be a reiteration of what arc is and i put a lot of time in arc um this says 55 hours but that's on pc and on xbox i would probably triple that or quadruple it probably like 200 300 hours plus plus this so like all in all probably close to like three four hundred hours i put into arc um loved a lot of it it is the dinosaur game bro and i know people from the aisle probably hate me right now but it is what it is i don't it's not a dra it's not a dinosaur simulator okay it is you taming dinosaurs in the world i should say my opinion this is my favorite dinosaur game apex legends i used to grind this game endlessly on xbox when it first dropped um, I was a platinum player on Apex as well back in the day. Back in the day, I was the last thing you see. And that's who I was for Apex and Call of Duty. I changed my name when I started streaming, um, which I've changed my name multiple times. I'm the official nobody now. So, And all of these are still aliases. Like if you called me the last thing you see or referred to me as Illidan, referred to me as the official nobody like it's all the same shit it's kind of like you know how m eminem has he's marshall mathers he's slim shady he's fucking eminem bruh like there's all these a aliases that you can have i'm also known as mongoose Not a lot of people people who have worked know me as mongoose multiple reasons why but anyway this is Apex. Back in the day, I was known as the last thing you see, and I was a platinum dickhead. Flexing on the map. Giving no fucks about anybody. Age of Empires. Um, it's an RTS game. It does a lot of historical references to kingdoms and many, many things that... uh. That can go on. All these achievements were PvP. Just throwing that out there. When I got this game for my computer, which is what all of this is referencing, these 52 hours came from when I got this computer. And, um, was it? No, this is even back. So this was back when I had the laptop. Damn. Oh. Yeah, I did a lot of PVPs with my friends. Um, this was back before I was content creating. 2021, Jesus. Mm. I can thank uh dude in specific for this one. This one guy. I ain't gonna throw his name out there, but he had it convinced where he could build his way to a victory and just castle after castle. It was like at 50 castles, I would say probably 30 to 40 of them. 
came from that one game. <laughs> <laughs> or you know what? Maybe it was over 50. Maybe that's what it is. It's that one game I killed over 50 guys with. But regardless, it was a lot. Age of Conan. Never played it. Thought it was something else. Um, Seven Days to Die. I covered that already. It's a legendary game. Um, highly recommended. Team player. Uh, survival builder. Um, had a lot of love for it. And a lot of the crafting and everything that goes on with it. So, had a great time with that. I'm not going to lie. Back to where I was at. At the Empires, we are on to Path of Exile, which is, and I mean this respectfully, okay, because I did have a lot of love for the time I did spend in Path of Exiles. However, my opinion, it's the free version of Diablo, okay, with a m way more massive skill tree. And I don't mean that in a good way. The skill tree is unnecessarily complex. And massive. It's, it actually makes my head hurt thinking about how massive that skill tree is. I had no idea where to start. Raft was a cute little game. Um, a uh, fun time with friends. I'll say that. Fun, cool time with friends. I don't see it having a lot of replayability. Um, but it was a lot of good times. And the story itself is extensively long so um, you can spend some good a good amount of time because you have to wait on the boat and it's the beauty of like when i say extensively long i mean that in a good way i don't like games that are short it's i'm not gonna say there aren't any games that i like i don't like games for the most part that are short i like i usually like games that take a long time to do that. I'm not in a rush. I'm I'm not trying to speed run all of this shit. I'm a role player and I'm an entertainer. So what I do is trying to enjoy the time. I'm not trying to rush through anything. I hate the amount of editing that some people put into their videos when they chop up endless hours of footage into like five fucking minutes and you're just shortening and shortening the attention span of this person how are they ever going to play the game if all they've ever seen online is people brushing through it or you chopping through and editing and showing them these little quibbles of how you made something so fast how are they ever going to play the game when they get into the game at the very least they'll get annoyed at how long it takes you weren't genuine in your video that you put out to them, so now they think that the game is something that it's not. So, that's what I had to say about games like that. Risk Domination. Dope-ass game to play with your friends. Easy, fun, free-to-play. It's Risk, okay? But it's online. And uh, it was really fun. I'd highly recommend it. Kind of like playing Among Us or some shit like that. Like, it's fun to play. A little cool game. Rome Total War. My one of my favorite RTSs ever. Without a doubt. One of my favorite RTSs. And um that 157 hours. Once again, I'd probably say I'd double it if you want to include me from when it first came out. When did this game first come out? Two thousand and four. Okay. Two thousand and four. So I was that's math. A lot of it. Hold on. I was like twelve. I was like twelve or thirteen when this first came out. And um had a great time with it. It was an amazing game. Had uh awesome time with it. Tons of stuff to do in the game, different races to play, different things that can go wrong, families that you keep after, everything like that. Also, it had the Barbarian Invasion. I have that on a physical disc 
how old that is that I had the Barbarian Invasion disc. And this is Rome Total War, the collection, so it includes the Barbarian Invasion. But originally, I bought it originally on a physical copy with uh, the Barbarian Invasion. Rome Total War Alexander, which, uh, as you can see by the hours played, it, it was a few extra races that they added to the game, and I didn't care for any. I think they added like four races, and all of them were basically just the Greek cities. <laughs> and they were literally all the Greek cities. They were all a variation of phallic format with light ranged cavalry, which I hate both of those. those are, it's my least favorite unit types of all of them. Like, Phallus is slow infantry, and then the militia cavalry is light cavalry. So it's, and it's ranged cavalry. So I just, this is the exact opposite of what I normally play as. Like, and even when I played as the Greek cities just to beat the game as the Greek cities, I turned all my phallic men into runners, and I turned all my militia cavalry. If you toggle skirmisher mode the, and run the militia cavalry through a target, they'll collide, they'll still do rush damage, they'll act like a melee force. And then with the phallic guys, if you undo phallic format, collide, and then do phallic format, it's actually very deadly. But the units are still slow and bulky and uh, exhausting to play with and are easily countered by anything ranged so i didn't really care for the unit type of alexander rust the most toxic game that there is and i'm surprised i have as many fucking achievements as i do i honestly don't know how how has 15% of players placed a workbench. How? How? I don't even... It just makes no sense. All of this <laughs> staging branch, unnecessary addition to Rust, and I played Rust the entirety of the time, never downloaded this. I have no idea what the fuck it's for. Scum! Covered Scum at the beginning. Um, I played Scum just to play Scum, and somehow... Oh... I remember when I first played Scum, I was on this server with um, a group of people, and uh, we had a we had been grouped up doing a lot of stuff. So when I saw those achievements, I was like, okay, that's the server that that came from. The one time I actually did grind this game for a number of days, I got those achievements. So I was surprised I had any, even if it was as little. I have like 10, 16. Fair enough. Um, I'm pretty sure like all 16 of those came from those few days. It didn't come from any other time. I just kind of dropped in the game. Sons of the Forest was literally the forest, but less. And it was extremely disappointing. And to end night, I have to say from the bottom of my heart, what the fuck, bruh? What in the actual fuck was this? You gave so much shit to uh, GSL, or not GSL, um, IGN. You gave so much shit to IGN, International Gaming Network, in that interview, talking shit about other games, releasing unfinished product, and what did you do? You gave me an unfinished product, and it sucked ass. It sucked so much ass and it took me in enough and 
took me an unnecessarily long amount of time to figure that out because I kept thinking like, okay, the mutants got to show up eventually. It's got to be something different. You didn't know it was the forest, but less. Now I hear through a lot of updates that they're bringing the game back and it's it's new and approved now. They've added more mutants. They've added more stuff. They added this and that with the building. There was a lot of stuff you just couldn't build, which is really stupid. I'm also not a fan of the new building that they have in it. I, I, they need to go back to the blueprint. I was so much more of a fan of the blueprint style of building. This new style of building is garbage. The wood pieces look better, but you could have reanimated the foundations of the blueprint and made them look like that. If all of if all it is is aesthetic, all you had to do was give it aesthetically. You don't have to. It sucked. It sucked, and it was very disappointing, and it took me a a lot of time to figure that out, and it was very disappointing. What's this? Oh, yeah. See, I got caught up in being back. It was, like I said, at first, it was immersive, so I got lost, and I spent a long time, and it took me a while before I was like, bruh, this sucks. This sucks. It's the fucking forest. Again, the only reason I'm playing it is because of the forest. It's because of the forest. But the new aiming mechanics, the new movement, as well as the new building fucking suck. And I was thoroughly disappointed in Sons of the Forest. And I was so hyped for this game. I bought it as soon as it dropped. And if it would have had any DLC, I would have bought that as well. Um, but it was garbage. It was the forest, but less. Start over. Um, has a lot of potential. A lot of potential. I think. Uh, I think if it works out, some of its graphics and some of its controls, it's still really blocky, and it doesn't have controller support. Which I'm. It's fine. I can make a. I can make a configuration, but it doesn't play in your favor with me when you don't have controller support. Um, but it has a lot of potential. It really does. And I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be up and coming. Subsistence was the most grindiest grind that I've ever grind. And I literally got no achievements out of it. I bet 3% of people didn't kill a fucking moose. That game, you, it, it was so grindy. Fucking, you spend 20 hours round the map getting zinc and lead and gun casings you'd bring them all back to your base you'd smelt the ore down combine it with the bullet casing that you found and craft three bullets after 20 hours of running around the fucking map it was so stupid. And then, by the time you finally got back to your base, the fucking hunters would show up. And they would have unlimited fucking ammo. Unlimited. I know, I would, sat, I would sit for a while, and I'd bait them out. And then they'd break a wall. I'd go to the other wall. Let him break that wall. Place a wall right before this one was about to break. So I'd go to the other wall. He'd break it all. Break everything. He'd break your whole goddamn base down. And he'd sit there and do it from a distance. It was so stupid. It was like getting Siege. Haven't played it yet. I don't know what it's like. I think it'll be interesting. Third Land looks like it's going to be pretty good. Haven't actually gotten around to playing it yet. Tiger Knight was uh, was actually really fun. It was like Dynasty Warriors. It's like Dynasty Warriors. Like an online Dynasty Warriors bit. Um, I just, I had other games in mind, but honestly, I don't have anything bad to say about it. At 2.5 hours, I spent one night with it, and uh, I just had other games to play, but it was fun. I do remember it. How long is this video? Ah, we're not watching videos right now.
Total War Chrome 2. If you liked the first one, play the first one. The second one was stupid. It changed up the concepts of... <laughs> it changed up so much stuff. It just ruined it. I hate when sequels want to change up from the original. Like, everyone loved the original, right? You got so much props for the original. On number two, you're even advertising the remastered version of number one twice. Because Rome 2 was dog shit. They changed up so much shit. I don't know why games do that. When when you see that someone loves and genuinely love your product, and you're coming out with the second one, you don't change core concepts of the game, man. They didn't let your units move freely. You had to have a general with every army. Uh, units could go freely between boats and land. It's just everybody became a boat to go over the water and then came onto land to do the land. It was so stupid. There's just no point in docks. There's no point in unit creations. You had no queue to queue up things. It was really stupid, and it just really got annoying. So if you enjoyed Rome Total War 1, play it again. Rome Total War 2 was stupid. Valheim absolutely a phenomenal game loved every minute of it even through the endless uh, endless death glitches that my character had which i don't know maybe if they have another new update i might jump back into it um but i'm tired of dying for no reason i'm tired of spawning in and dying I don't know why my character just kept glitching. It was really painful, and um, there was nothing I could do about it. And I recorded it all. I had said something about it in discussions on Steam. Whatever. Wallpaper Engine. I suggest you get it. It's really worth it. For real. Warhammer Vermintide, um, it was fun, it was fun, it's a, it's a, basically like a dungeon delver, you know, over and over again, you're queuing up to fight things, and you have, like, tiered lists of things that you can fight, um, I say it like this, I, I thought the fighting was interesting. I just it wasn't my cup of tea. Like I thought it was interesting. It was fun to play. It's it's more of a one time thing. I don't or a few times. I wouldn't do this on like a consistent basis. But it was fun. And Zero Survival, the last last name on this list, but not the last name on my list, obviously. My list is never ending. But Zero Survival is the last name on this list. It, uh... It never got the support that it needed. I'll say it like that. I think I think it's a great concept. I think it has a lot of potential. But, like, it's been out for a while. And, um... But how... Like 21, three years. Yeah, it just, like I said, it's got it's got a lot of potential. It just didn't, it never really got the attention from, I would say, investors or something. Someone needs to invest in it in order for it to get better. Because, like, where it is now, I don't know. I don't know. To be fair, when was the last time I played it? If I can, if this thing can tell me. I don't really have any achieve. There is no achievements in the game, which is unfortunate. So I can't even, and I didn't, I didn't take any. I did take screenshots. 
are you talking about? I have a ton of screenshots that I used in my videos, bruh. Just look at this thing. I used custom screenshots for my thumbnails for the videos of this game. And it's not showing up here, which is really stupid. But, um, yeah. And this is why I recommend the wallpaper. That is a wallpaper, my guy. Live action, mobile, and you know, I think I think the app was like two dollars or some shit like that. So I'd highly recommend getting it. It's beautiful, beautiful use of your money. Beautiful use. Yeah, and uh, I'm definitely going to be chopping this up for YouTube. There's a lot of venting that I did, and uh, a lot of game comparison. So I think I think that's actually really dope, the clutch. And that's kind of my main concept. My main niche is the amount of gaming knowledge. Oh, I didn't even mention this. We were on the list. First and foremost, Avatar: Frontiers of Pandora. Absolutely phenomenal game. Kind of like Far Cry, okay, but it used sneaking mechanics from Assassin's Creed, and it had a Skyrim level of um, mini game, uh, side quest and stuff. So absolutely phenomenal. Plus original direct storyline relating to the film that James Cameron put out. So that's first and foremost the bit on that I had to say about Avatar. For everyone trying to give Avatar shit is a five star game with direct movie reference. And when do you see that? Do you see what they did to Walking Dead and other movie releases and T V show releases? Man, shit. Avatar was the shit. I mean eat my grits. Wild Hearts, um, an awesome game, like a samurai world of Final Fantasy. It's kind of like a Final Fantasy vibe, but it's got like a samurai bit going on. You have an upgrade uh, tiered list by the amount of times you can kill a boss. So every time you kill a boss, you get like pieces to craft a better armor. So the more times you actually kill a boss, the more times you get armor pieces to craft better armor and better things and stuff. And in addition, Skyrim. Let's go ahead and let's include Skyrim and I'll end on Skyrim because the list actually goes on. If I start getting into like Minecraft and Stuff like that. Like, the, the, the list goes on and on. Far Cry. All of the stuff. All of these things are things that I've played. And, um, done a lot of content on. And, uh, Skyrim has, and is still to this day, like, my Moby Dick. I still have yet to encounter the Ebony Warrior. I've actually played it three times. Two level two of them were to like level forty fifty ish and then the one I'm on now is at level forty. So at level sixty, evidently, which I never fucking knew this. Um, until later on in life, at level 60, if you reach it and you lurk around in Windhelm, the main city of the, uh, not the Nords, but the other, the city folk, the, the Imperials, if you go in Windhelm, the main city of the Imperials, 
at level 60 during the day, the Ebony Warrior will come and pick a fight with you. He'll spawn in and he'll come and pick a fight with you. So I can't wait. I'm going to beat his face in. I have complete dragon armor with dragon maces and all of my skills are level 100. Literally, I'm going to shit on him. But I can never get him to spawn in. I can never get it to happen. So, it's unfortunate. But it's on my list of things. And in order to get to level 60, I basically had to start the game over again with a different notion. And there's no enemies left on the map. There's no little... I've, I've killed pretty much everything. Things don't spawn in. If it's not like a spawning in kind of thing. It's like literally there's stuff on the map. You get to kill it. And once you killed it, it's dead. Also, I'm doing it in survival. So maybe that's a concept at hand, but I'm doing it in survival, so there's just not even a lot of shit left on the map for me to kill. And Minecraft. One of my favorite games to play with my kids, and I would highly recommend it. It's an awesome game. Things you can lose hours and hours of time in. And, uh, Believe it or not, Minecraft was one of the most, if, if it wasn't the original, it was damn close to being the original survival game. Because it is a survival game at heart, and it's been around for so long, I would say it was the original survival. People got sur the notions that we have about survival from that game. And when it first, first dropped, it had... Um, it had cold, and it had heat, and it had a whole different mob set, and it was way more realistic. They dumbed it down to make it more applicable for kids. But originally, it wasn't supposed to be like that. Originally, it was supposed to be like a Minecraft horror, I mean, a survival horror thing. But then Minecraft started selling it to kids and dumbed it down. So, it is what it is. I'm not knocking them for it. Um. Do that all the time. I used to do that all the time. Uh, all, even with me, a lot of what I'm putting out there is like moldable material. So, like, I mold them to this and that. So, you know, it uh, it all boils down to the audience at hand on what the content is actually going to be, and I like that concept. I think it's very interesting. Um, to have multiple content, to have games be versatile. Sometimes games aren't versatile. They're good for what they are, and if you fuck with the ratio or if you fuck with the recipe, you're going to mess with the output, and it's not going to be good. So it's very interesting when a game can be that versatile and changeable. I think that's refreshing. So without further ado, so I can make sure to get it right for YouTube, especially when I highlight it and chop it up a little bit. Um, maybe make a custom thumbnail with me going on. Or some shit. Um, without further ado, man, if you're liking the channel and you're liking the content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, bro. Peace.